Why does this painting from 1489 by Martin Schongauer show the Virgin Mary with a unicorn? And what is the role of the hunting dogs? When looking at Renaissance art, you will often see animals, and these usually have an important symbolic meaning. This is the second part of a video about the iconography of animals in Renaissance and Baroque art. Last week's video discussed the symbolic meanings of the dog, ermine, goldfinch, peacock, rabbit and the serpent. If you have not seen it, I can certainly recommend you checking out that video as well. I'll put a link in the description box below. In this video, we'll look at the monkey, the parrot, the unicorn and the cat. As explained in last week's video, in Renaissance art, animals are rarely included just for fun and they usually have an important symbolic meaning. The main exception are paintings where the animals just form a natural element of the story, like some of the depictions of the Ark of Noah. And this painting from 1615 by Peter Paul Rubens and Jan Bruegel the Elder shows the Garden of Eden full of beautiful animals. But it also shows the fall of man, and in that regard there are some animals among them that have a clear symbolic meaning, like the snake above Mary and the cat behind her feet. And the monkey also plays a significant role here, and this is a good moment to start discussing the symbolism of our first animal in some more depth. Among all the animals in this story are two monkeys. The one below Adam's feet is interested in some grapes and the one on the bottom left is about to take a bite of an apple, which is in this context a clear reference to the sin of mankind as Adam is also about to consume the forbidden apple he receives from Eve. The explanation is that the monkey was seen as a stand-in of a human but lacking our intelligence to differentiate between good and bad actions. More generally, the monkey is often a reference to the sins of lust and earthly desires, or an explicit warning against these sins, like in this portrait of Queen Henrietta Maria by Anthony van Dyck, where the monkey is safely chained to her dwarf as a reminder to control her earthly desires. Of course, the monkey is also sometimes included for less serious reasons, and this started to happen mostly from the Baroque period onwards, like in this work from 1618 by Diego Velazquez, entitled The Three Musicians, where the monkey mainly serves as a comical reference. The parrot is usually associated with Mary. Here we see the Madonna with child and parrot painted in 1533 by Hans Baldung Green. The parrot is of course known for its ability to talk and in general associated with the word of God. But more specifically, it was frequently associated with Mary's ability to conceive, not through physical means, but through the word of God. This is also known as the Immaculate Conception. And the parrots here are a clear reminder of how Mary had gotten pregnant of baby Jesus. And so, scenes like this one, showing Mary with Jesus on her lap, feeding a parrot, were not uncommon during the Renaissance. And here's a detail from a painting by Jan van Eyck, showing Mary, Jesus and the green parrot. At times, we need to look a bit more carefully to identify a parrot. But if you come across Madonna paintings from the Renaissance, there is a chance that you may see a parrot-like bird hidden somewhere. Here is, for example, a painting from 1496 by Andrea Mantegna, entitled Madonna della Vittoria. If we zoom in a bit, we can see a silver-like parrot sitting above Mary's hat on the left side. Recent research has shown that this is actually an exotic kind of cockatoo, but the idea is the same, as it refers to the immaculate conception of the main character, the Virgin Mary. In 1489, Martin Schongauer created this oil painting entitled 
the mystic hunt of the unicorn. It shows a scene of the Annunciation where the angel Gabriel is announcing to the Virgin Mary that she will give birth to the Son of God. We can see the unicorn gently perching on Mary's bent knee. The unicorn here combines a couple of symbolic meanings. The first is that the unicorn was a symbol of purity and grace and it was often allegorically associated with Christ. The second one is based on the perception that the unicorn was an extremely wild beast and could only be captured by a virgin, referring to Mary's virginity. We can also see that in this fresco from 1602 by Domenichino, where a virgin is taming a unicorn, and as well in this portrait painting by Raphael from 1506, showing the sitter with a unicorn, referencing to her virginity and chastity. And then you may be wondering why there are also several hunting dogs included in Sean Gower's piece. In last week's video, we learned that the domestic dog is typically associated with loyalty and fidelity, like we see in the Arnolfini portrait by Jan van Eyck. But the hound or hunting dog have a different interpretation. Here they accompany the angel Gabriel who is depicted in the role of a hunter and in legends the unicorn would often accompany hunters and serve as bait. In this context the hunting dog would represent Christian virtues like justice, mercy and peace. The cat is one of our favorite domestic animals today but its iconography is not always that favorable. Here's a painting from 1616 by the Dutch artist Hendrik Goltzius. It may look like some mythological painting at first, but the title, The Fall of Man, tells us that we see Adam and Eve here, accompanied by some animals. Most noticeable are the cat and the two goats. To start with the goats, they are associated with the lack of chastity of Eve, and the cat on the left is a reference to some of the earthly pleasures like lust and desire. And before learning a bit more about the iconography of the cat, did you notice the elephant in the background? A symbolic reference to the Christian values like piety, chastity and temperance? And if you look very carefully above the right shoulder of Eve, you can recognize a serpent with a female face, something that was discussed in some detail in last week's video and symbolizes the sin of mankind. To interpret the cat, it is often important to take into account what the cat is doing. Returning to the Garden of Eden by Rubens and Bruegel, you can see a cat behind the legs of Eve. It actually seems a choleric cat, referring to its treachery and trickery. But just like monkeys, cats are also ideal as a fun element in paintings, like in this work from 1575 by Federico Barocchi, called Madonna of the Cat, showing a cat at the bottom left being interested in the goldfinch that Saint John the Baptist is holding. Or look at Paolo Veronese's wedding at Cana, where the cat on the bottom right is about to knock over a cask of wine. In today's and last week's video, we have looked at the iconography of over 10 different animals. But there are obviously many more. Let me know if you would like me to discuss the iconography of other animals in future videos. Or if you have any questions about the symbolic presence of animals in Renaissance or Baroque paintings. I always love reading your feedback. I would like to thank you all for watching and if you have enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below and don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons to help out this channel.